Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to Game Brigade. I am Brian and today we are going to be doing our first games leaving the collection. Uh, with it being December, I felt like it'd be a great opportunity to finally start clearing out some games from my collection. Mostly games that uh, either I um, don't play or have replacements coming in for them. Um, or uh, just didn't hit the, the right mark for me. So we're just gonna go over what I have right now. There'll probably be more games at some point that I, as I go through and really decide like what can I get rid of, there'll probably be more, but uh, that's, uh, that's it. So let's go and start. So first off, big box, uh, Edge of Darkness. So this was a recent Kickstarter. I also have some expansions right here. The, I actually got all the expansions inside the box. Uh, but I saved the boxes just in case whoever might want them at one point would want them. So Edge of Darkness, this is actually a uh, specialty case because the last Kickstarter went live and uh, I didn't own this game at the time that the Kickstarter was live, but in a weird turn of events, uh, I did do the, the Kickstarter. I think it was 174, which was an all-in pledge with the new expansion. And then I was able to secure this for a relatively good price. And um, it was one of those things that, you know, they say that even a good deal, it, if you don't need it, it does it's not a deal. Well, I bought it because the deal was such a good deal. But the reality is I have another copy coming, which is going to be an additional expansion. Uh, I have to move this. And uh, I'd rather get rid of it now during a holiday season where it's more likely to sell than sitting on it for another six months, nine months, whatever it may be. I do think it might have been a mistake probably to buy it in the first place, seeing as how I have the Kickstarter. But, um, yeah, you know, you make stupid decisions sometimes when uh, you have um, when you have a good deal laying in front of you. So Edge of Darkness is a um, worker placement uh, card building, card crafting game, uh, kind of a Euro game. But I've never actually played it. We haven't had a chance to break it out. I unboxed it. I got it all ready to go. I actually think I fully sleeved this as well, if I remember right. I can't remember. I know I there's something about sleeves in here. Maybe it came with sleeves. Um, but uh, it's just all ready to go. Unfortunately, we didn't play it. Uh, we'll see if I can get a you know get at least what I paid for it back. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. Uh, if not, we'll we'll see. So that's the first one, Edge of Darkness. So we'll kind of keep the expansions to the side. Next, I've got Chronicles of Crime from Lucky Duck Games. Chronicles of Crime is a game where players will be using an app to, uh, it's an app-based game, so I'm going to say, you know, right off the bat, app-based game, where you're going to be going on, uh, you're a detective trying to solve cases. I don't want to say murder because they're not always necessarily murder cases, but you're trying to solve some sort of crime. Um, definitely a very charming game, a great game for people who like deduction and crime solving. Really had a great time with it. The unfortunate thing about this one is it's limited replayability. Uh, once you've solved the cases, if your memory is um, wired in a way that you have a hard time forgetting how things play out, uh, this game loses its luster relatively quickly because you know the story. Um, but I got it for a great price. I'll send it along for an additionally great price to the next person. Plus, I have the newest Chronicles of Crime. We got the three-pack, the Millennium series. So this one is no longer needing in our collection. Uh, but I really enjoyed it while it was here. Um, so that's Chronicles of Crime from Lucky Duck. Next, we have a well-loved Game of Thrones board game. I believe it's the second edition. This is a game I picked up at a swap meet a long time ago. This was actually one of the first board games I bought and added to my collection, and I probably bought it mostly for the fact to add to my collection with the hopes that at some point I would play it. Uh, in this game, players will be playing a house uh, in the Game of Thrones world, and you are going to be trying to secure victory through political means and bluffing and combat and whatnot. I've never actually also not played this one. And that was a problem. That's one of the reasons why we're getting rid of it, at least for now. I feel like at some point, if I want this game or if there's an itch, like an itch to play it again or play it, uh, 
we can relatively get it. I find this game uh, usually for sale on Facebook Marketplace for about $20 to $25. I'll probably be sending on this lightly used copy for around $10 or $15 um, just, just to get rid of it. Uh, again, this is one of those games that if I haven't played it since 2017, I don't necessarily think I'm going to play it. So I'd rather give it to someone else who might enjoy it and uh, open up some space for myself. So that's a Game of Thrones, the board game. And I'll, to add an additional, I don't know about you guys, but Game of Thrones lost a lot of um, love for me in the final season. And I just, just the whole franchise just kind of really died for me. So that doesn't help. So the next game we have is Shadows Over Camelot by Days of Wonder. Now this is kind of considered a grail game by many standards for people in our hobby. Uh, this is an out of print game where players are going to be playing as Knights of the Round Table where they're going on quests to try to defeat the Black Knight or search for the Holy Grail. Um, and every time you complete a quest, you're going to be adding a marker to show it's a completed quest. But if you fail a quest, there's a marker on that as well. Uh, but what makes this game interesting is that there could be a potential for a hidden trader in it. And I feel like games that have hidden trader mechanics uh, really shine well. And uh, Shadows has kind of had a very good history uh, with it in terms of its love. I'm getting rid of this because I have a second copy. So I don't really need to. I've held on to both of them for a while. Uh, figured it's time I should probably move this one. I have tried in the past you know when i've seen people interested in it i do mention i have it uh, but people have never really uh you know taken the offer to buy it or you know move along on it but now i'm actually gonna really try hard uh so here are some games that are again never played uh castellian um by steve jackson games this is a game i picked up in a collection purchase that i uh, i did and um don't really have any desire to ever play it and uh, I kept it for so long because it's a small box game. It doesn't take up a lot of room. But when I look at the back, um, the, the premise of the game, from what I can tell, is that two players are going to be building a castle uh, using their pieces. And you have to build it using your cards that you're drawing along the way. Um, it kind of reminded me of that dot game that we played when we were kids. You know, you draw a line, and if you completed a square, uh, the person uh, who completed it would put their their name in the middle or their initial. That's kind of what this reminded me of. Um, and I, I thought maybe one time, maybe I'd play with my daughter, but my daughter's still so far away from ever playing games. Um, I don't think there's a, a reason to keep games of this age uh, that I don't really find interesting myself. Uh, for her for that long uh, and that's kind of what these next two games as well were kind of hiding under uh, Dingo's Dreams and 8 Minute Empire Legends both of these games are from uh, Red Raven and uh, definitely were games that I was keeping because they were kind of whimsical and the great art on them and I thought my daughter might like them um, but again I just don't have the room I have so many games that I have to clear out for uh, and so these are part of them. Uh, the 8 Minute Empire is a quick area control game um, where players can be playing cards. I hear it's actually not bad for like a 30 minute game. Um, so maybe I should play it before I get rid of it. Uh, I don't know. These two are harder for me to get rid of mostly because they do have interesting art on them and their boxes are kind of unique and they're easy to store together. So maybe there's a chance I keep them. I don't know. Um, I would probably, probably, again, I haven't played them. Uh, it's so hard to play new games when you have so many games coming in from Kickstarter and uh, review copies. Sometimes it's hard to get through them all. Okay, so this one. I've got Descent, Journeys in the Dark, and in it I have included, so there's nothing inside this box, this is empty, but it does include in this box, Descent, Layer of the Worm expansion. So the um, Descent game, I have, I still have the complete first edition. This is the second edition. I actually have two copies of the second edition. Uh, I can't find my second copy for whatever reason, so that's why we have another copy. And... Um, that's an expansion we have with it. But we just picked up the, not technically third edition, but we got the newest version. I don't necessarily think I need three copies of editions of Descent. I'm not getting rid of the first edition because it's kind of uh, means a lot to me in terms of um, 
my background, I guess, in terms of where I've been with board gaming it was like one of the first big board games that we really played and really enjoyed. Uh, but second edition doesn't really have any special place for me. So this one will be moving along. It's also part of the line of games with the um, all against like one against all. And I don't really like those styles of games very much anymore. So um, we haven't played very many of them. This is another line from Fantasy Flight Games, Arkham Horror. I believe this is the revised edition or second edition. I don't know if there's much of a difference. But we also have a complete first edition of Arkham Horror with a bunch of expansions. And we don't play that anyways. And so I don't think we necessarily need two expansions or two editions of Arkham Horror. Arkham Horror is a game where players are uh, playing different types of roles. I was going to say detectives, but you're, you could be a bunch of different stuff. And you're going around the city of Arkham, uh, getting better equipment, fighting monsters from the, uh, the, the horror monsters, and going through different types of dimensional portals. Um, it was fun. It was a fun game. It took a long time for us to learn the rules, and I don't necessarily think we would uh, be playing this anytime soon. Again, I think we're keeping the first edition mostly for nostalgic purposes. And then we're coming up to the last two. So, Waste Nights. This is a recent Kickstarter. This is an all-in pledge. I think the veteran pledge. And this is one that I did a playthrough on the channel. And uh, I actually enjoyed this game. So I had a few of my people in the, in the player group say, why are you getting written, written Waste Nights? Did you not like it? And I like it. I think it's fun. But I think there's some things that make this game not for me. First off, I don't like always... Um, two fisting solo experiences i want to play my character i don't want to play two characters to play the game i want to play my character and experience the story in the playthrough i did i did play the single player mission but i couldn't find another single player like like solo single fist mission they were all uh, multiplayer or <coughs> excuse me two two um needing two fisting and i didn't like that uh, also, based on the player counts, when you add a lot more player counts, the game really starts to drag because the main mechanism of the game is there's a book that you're reading different entries, and it's kind of a choose-your-own-adventure uh, type of game where it'll say read uh, 192, we make your decision, then read section 82. So you're doing a lot of back-and-forth flipping. Uh, if you're playing a multiplayer game, that takes a long time to experience because you're letting them enjoy their story but maybe you don't necessarily care what they're doing because you care about your story. It, it just definitely wasn't for me. Uh, I do hear that they're making an app for this game, which I think would be great and help the game a lot. Um, but I don't necessarily think I need to wait for it. Uh, and uh, maybe maybe someone will buy it and I can play it. You know, and if I ever need to play it again, I can pick it up. I definitely don't think I need the all-in edition, though, uh, again. So that is Waste Nights. And over here... I got a bunch of bunch of boxes, but they're all for the same game. I don't necessarily need to pull them all out. Uh, so we're going to pull out one. And I'm just going to let you know I'm selling the complete collection. Uh, so we have uh, Pearl Brook, Belfair, and Spirecrest for Everdell. And this is the collector's edition. So all the copies I have are collector's editions of Everdell. And Everdell is a tableau building game where you're going to be playing these little forest creatures, building your city, uh, playing actions with your workers, trying to do the most. And it's one of those games that really makes you feel in the beginning of the game like you have no clue how you're going to complete your tasks at all uh, because you're like, I have no actions, I have no resources, how am I going to do this? And then by the third turn, the third phase, you just have so many resources, so many different things you can do uh, that it really is crazy how well it ramps up. Uh, really enjoy this game. Um, definitely don't want to get rid of it, but we're getting the complete collection from the Kickstarter at some point, so I no longer need this. Uh, so we're going to have to sell this, unfortunately, at a loss uh, because the Kickstarter edition was such a good deal. But I figured maybe on Christmas someone might enjoy it. It's a collection edition, well taken care of. And uh, some of them are still sealed. Like Belfair, I never, when I knew that I was going to um, not play, uh, not, like when I got the collector's edition coming in, I didn't need to open this. I was like, I'll just play it once, once we get our new edition in. 
So this is the Everdell collection, and this will be rounding out the games that are leaving my collection for the month of December. Uh, so that's it right now. What about you guys? Are you guys going to be letting any games go? Let me know in the comment section down below. Or if you think I should be keeping any of these games or giving them a second chance before I let them go, let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts. Otherwise, this is Brian from Game Brigade. I appreciate you for staying till the end. Thank you, and I'll talk to you very soon. Thank you.